Hello grade three and welcome back to art. It is January 2021. I cannot believe it and I am ready to begin. I hope you are too. And for today's project, we're going to be learning something called one point perspective. One point perspective is one of my favorite things to do. It teaches you how to take a 2D picture, which is flat, and make it look 3D, which looks like it has depth to it, okay? So to do this today, you will need a piece of paper, you will need a drawing instrument, I'm gonna be using a marker, but I would probably use a pencil for this, and I am going to use a ruler or a straight edge, okay? A straight edge is just something that has a straight edge, okay? So I'm using a popsicle stick, but you might have a ruler at home, or the edge of a book, or the edge of something that has a straight line, okay? So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to draw four boxes on this paper, okay? But there's a trick to this, all right? Do not put the boxes so they end up in the corner. You want them to be kind of floating in the corners, okay? So I'm gonna use my straight edge and I am going to just draw four squares. And don't worry if they're 100% perfect because you can always go back and redo the picture. And this is why I make the videos. I say this all the time, but it's so that way you can go back and pause it and rewatch it. Okay, so there's two. And we can do another one here. And I'm going to make mine a little bit different uh, in size because I want to show you uh, how that's going to play into the next part. Okay, so do you see how this one is a little bit more rectangular than these two? Okay, so if you are changing up your shape a bit, that's fine. Okay, but to get started, to learn how to do this, I would definitely just make them simple. All right, so there are four boxes. All right, so to make this picture start to look three-dimensional, in one point perspective, there is something called the vanishing point. All right, the vanishing point controls the paper. All right, it tells all the lines where to go and it tells all the objects in the picture how big or how small they need to be. So in the middle of your paper right here, put a little dot like that. It could be a little tiny X. But this little dot is going to be in the vanishing point, okay? Now, the vanishing point has magic power. As I just said to you, it controls the paper. So as long as you put your vanishing point on your paper and follow the rules I'm going to teach you, your picture will look 3D, all right? So I have my four boxes. Boop, 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 boop. And I put the little vanishing point right there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the four squares to the vanishing point, okay? Now there's a trick to this. You're only connecting three of the corners. Do not connect the corner that is closest to the corner of the paper. Confused? Let me show you. So I'm going to take my straight edge and I'll work right here on this box, okay? I'm going to touch the corner and touch the vanishing point with my straight edge. It's really, really important to use a ruler, okay? And I'm going to draw a line to connect the corner to the vanishing point. You must use a ruler, okay, or a straight edge. Now I'm going to do corner number two. There we go. And now I'm going to connect corner number three. I'm not going to do that corner because he's closest to the corner. Do you see? All right. Now this one might be a little tricky 
but you have to really manipulate that ruler to get that line to touch both the vanishing point and the corner. All right? So let me move on to box number two. All right? Touch the vanishing point and the corner at the same time with the straight edge. Draw a line. Do it again. And do it again. Do not do this corner, because he's the guy closest to that corner. Are you starting to see buildings? Let's do my third one here. As you get good at this, you will see you're going to be able to draw much quicker. Building number three, you see the city forming? This is called an aerial view. An aerial view is the view from maybe like a helicopter looking down into the city. Okay? So, do you see my four buildings? Pretty cool, right? Let me show you the next step. Okay, so let's take a look at this picture really quick. Here we have the top of the buildings, and we're looking down into the city at the street. Now, do you see what the vanishing point is doing? It's making our eye think that that building is shrinking and going further down onto the earth. So this part is closer to us in the picture, and this is really far away. So the vanishing point makes things shrink. The closer you are to the vanishing point, the smaller you have to be, okay? Now, in this picture, we need to put the road in down below, all right? So I'm gonna move you down. And basically, I want you to just use your imagination. Don't worry about perfection right now. And I'm gonna draw a road. And you have to now go around the buildings. So don't draw on the buildings, right? You have to make it look like the road is being blocked by the buildings. Do you see that? So I'm gonna put dotted line. There. And this is a city, so a city has multiple roads, right? So I think I'm gonna put, hmm, I'm gonna put another road. Maybe this is an overpass here. An overpass is when the roads kinda crisscross and there's a bridge. Now I'm keeping it very simple right now, but you can go crazy with your roads if you wanted, right? Okay, I think how about in this corner here? I'm gonna draw kind of a wiggly line, and that's gonna be the edge of maybe a pond or some sort of water formation, because I'm looking down into the picture. So the land is flat, it's like a map, okay? So now, let's indicate what each of these buildings are. So how about here, this is gonna be a hospital. So I'm gonna make a helicopter landing on top. So an H for helicopter, because that's where the helicopters land when they have to get to the hospital. This here, I think, is going to be maybe a radio tower. So I'm going to put a circle with a line shooting up and another little dot. And do you see how that created an antenna? 
And now I think over here, this is a private apartment building. So I think I'm gonna put... Again, notice I'm using the ruler or the straight edge. Don't get lazy and sloppy and start putting wiggles and jiggles on there. It's gonna ruin the perspective, okay? So there is maybe some water, because that's a private pool on the rooftop there. And I think over here, hmm, I will make, let's see, how about I'm just going to draw another rectangle to indicate that this kind of dips in a bit and this is more of like a cement patio on the roof line. Okay, okay. So when I hold this up, you can really see the perspective and the power of that vanishing point. But there's one more thing I want to do. I want to put some windows on the buildings to kind of give them some more detail. All right? Now, there is a very important thing you got to do with the windows. And a lot of kids I do every year. I always do this picture every year, so you may have seen it if you have a brother or sister. But I think it's so important to learn because it helps change the way you see artwork. Because once you know how to draw one point perspective, you can find the vanishing point in most pictures. So to make the windows or the edges of the building, there's something you have to do, okay? I'll do the radio tower building. Do you see this edge right here? How it goes up and down? All right, you have to follow that line and make it go all the way down. So when I draw the skyscraper's edges, okay, I'm gonna use this line as my marking guide, all right? So you want your lines in that triangle to be the same direction as the top line. Do you see how they're going up and down? Now, when I go to this side of the building right here, okay, this side is going left to right. So when I go to draw these lines, they have to stay right to left, just like the line in the beginning of the box. Do you see that? So now if I was going to draw some windows on this building, windows would only be dotted lines. You wouldn't see a square because it's the wrong perspective. You're not looking straight at it, you're looking down at it, okay? So follow the edge of the box so it goes up and down, and this time I'm going to put dotted lines. Now, as I get towards the vanishing point, those dotted lines have to shrink and get smaller. Do you see that? They are all facing the same direction as this line right here, up and down. So they're all up and down. Now, when I go to this side, the top of the box is left to right. You see that? So I'm going to draw them. Where am I? Over here. Left to right. It feels weird when you're learning perspective to draw like that. Because we're not used to it. But once you do it correctly, it looks right to your eyeball. Okay? So let me put some over here. Up and down. left to right. Now, I've been drawing for many years, so I'm, you know, pretty comfortable with this, but it might take you two or three times to get the sides of the buildings to look correct, okay? And let me do some windows on this building here. I'm shrinking, and I'm making my dotted lines go smaller and smaller because they're getting further and further away. And this side goes left to right. 
Everything you put on this paper has to follow the rules of perspective. If one thing is off, it's going to look a little funny. Okay? So there is the beginning of my picture. So there's one last thing I want to show you how to do, and that's a helicopter. Because once you start putting objects in, your imagination takes over and you can start to be creative. Now this is how cartoon artists make those really cool pictures with Spider-Man and Batman, is they know the rules of the vanishing point, okay? Now if I was going to draw a helicopter, I'm going to draw a very simple, silly looking one, right? Helicopter is dome, has like a little tail like that, kind of shoots up and it has the propeller on the back. And then it has the propeller up here with the window, right? Basic idea of a helicopter. I think you get the point, right? Mm, kind of silly, right? Okay. But this helicopter would not fit in this picture because if I put this helicopter in this picture, the helicopter would then be sideways. It doesn't make sense. It's not drawn according to the perspective of the picture. So to make a helicopter, I'm going to teach you how to draw one real quick. All right, remove my paper. And I have to find a nice empty spot. I think I'll put it right here. I teach kids how to make a helicopter with three simple shapes, okay? The first thing you want to draw is a chicken leg, like a drumstick. Okay, see? Drumstick. Then, Put an X over the drumstick, and then put a circle around the X. And then if you want, you can kind of do that again at the other side. But do you see now how you're looking at the top of the helicopter? So that circle is the propellers moving around, but you see it from a different point of view you're seeing it from the aerial point of view. Okay? Pretty cool, right? So I also, if I wanted, can put spy, um, maybe, not Spider-Man, what's his name? Superman. Flying in the picture here. And he would be looking like that because we're looking at the top of him. So we're looking at the back of his head and his cape. Do you see he's flying across the city? And maybe I'll put a couple little lines to look like he's just zooming across. Okay, so give this picture a try. This is picture number one in our perspective unit. And you can leave it black and white. I think it looks good in black and white because you can really see the crisp sharp lines, right? And if you do it with a pencil, go back over it with a marker, all right? So give this picture a try. Keep it. Don't get rid of it because you're going to need it for part two, all right? Have fun, boys and girls, and I'll see you next week.